Hello everyone, it's Perry back here in Park City with another Collider exclusive interview. We right now are in Park City, of course, at the Kia Supper Suite. Big thanks to Kia for making all of this happen so we could talk to the team behind Farewell and More. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank I you imagine so you had a wonderful day yesterday at the premiere. It was pretty magical. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty magical, yeah. I cannot wait to see this one. Uh, Equa, we have to start with you here because I'm going to get the question that you're going to hear time and time again over with first because a lot of our viewers do not know what the movie is about. Would you mind giving the brief synopsis? Yeah. Um, so our film, Farewell Amor, is a story about a family, uh, Angolan immigrants who've been separated for 17 years due to visa immigration issues. So at the top of the story, they're finally reunited and are now challenged with um, having to rediscover one another um, and what they've turned into after you know the long distance apart and using the tool of dance as a way to reunite. I was reading that you had made a prequel short to this. Was that kind of done as a proof of concept to get the feature off the ground? Yes, it was. Um, a short film that I'd worked on some years ago won a cash prize and required that I shoot another short. And knowing that I'd wanted to work on a feature for this, um, my producer and I decided to use that cash prize to make a proof of concept for the feature. So that's what we did. So then what happens from there? Because I often find that, you know, you come up with the intentions to make a film, but then getting the green light is a different story. And there hits this point where you lock this one little thing that kind of makes it feel real, like you're really going. So what was that thing for you that really got this off the ground? Well, I mean, the proof of concept was pretty powerful in, in that regard and sort of um, not just proof of concept that we can shoot a film, but in terms of sort of what the mood and feel of the story was. Um, so that in combination with the synopsis and, you know, all of the, the budget stuff and whatever of what we were about to do um, was very, very useful in terms of getting us into the door of a lot of the development um, labs that we got into, including Sundance feature film development. Ah, I always love hearing about that process because the Sundance labs are definitely uh, something special. So oh, absolutely. Congratulations for going through that process. Thank it's you. a wonderful thing. Can you tell me a little bit about bringing your ensemble together now? Is it kind of a wide range? search did you know any of them in advance how did that go yeah uh, and Tyra and I have been friends for a while we actually met on the film festival route years ago um, both of us had Tyra is also a filmmaker and both of us had a short film in a festival together and had been swearing and sort of like yeah we should work together one of these days we should work together one of these days and so when this came up um, actually even for the prequel the short prequel I had asked him to work on it. I had absolutely no money at that time <laughs> and he lived in LA. So I wasn't able to bring him to New York to shoot it. But for the feature, I was like, you know, I think this would be really, really great for you. Um, and so he was gracious enough to send us a audition headshot so I could, you know, share it with my producers and things like that. Um, and that's how Ntari came on board. That makes me so happy yeah. to hear. I, lo I love hearing when people meet at a festival. It's yeah. just, I mean, that's part of the point of being here. Yeah, and we've been collaborators for a while, and that was really sweet. Zainab is somebody I've known from the theater world in New York for a while and just seen her work. And we've also bumped into each other at the same film festivals mm -hmm. and just kind of like, hey, how you doing? Um, but when we did, because we did have um, auditions, we had a casting director and we did hold auditions in New York. Um, and surprisingly, there weren't a lot of, there were a lot of people were very intimidated by the role um, that Zainab plays of Esther, um, largely because of the accent um, requirements. Um, and it's just, it was a very dense role. Um, and so, you know, she completely knocked it out of the park and my casting director was like, you definitely want, you definitely want to have Zainab and we're just so, so pleased <laughs> that that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and Jamie also came through casting. Um, that was the one role that we knew was not going to be an offer, was going to be a new discovery. Um, and it had a lot of requirements to it, too, because the person needed to have dance ability. They needed to be able to do accents. They needed to be we ne wanted somebody who was over 18 but could play under 18. Um, and she came in through casting and just completely blew us away. And similarly, our casting director was like, she's about to be a star. You definitely <laughs> want to take her. 
like don't even think twice. I think you and guys so nailed that so far. Yeah. <laughs> so Jamie, did you have intentions of b becoming an actor or was your background mostly dance? Oh, I have no background in dance. Um, oh, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> um, no, my background is in acting. I went to uh, conservatory training for theater. Um, and I just like to move and I pick up um, African style dancing really well. It just fits in my mm -hmm. body. Um, but I'm not trained at all. This one is the trained dancer here. Ah, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So first feature film, I'm yeah. wondering, having been through the process now and moving on to other projects, if you could go back to the very beginning of this one and give yourself one piece of advice, having been through the experience, what would it be? I don't know, because the experience truly was amazing working with all of them. Because starting off, I was so scared. I was so nervous. Because like you said, it was all these requirements of like, you have to have this Angolan accent, which is very difficult. And you have to be able to do Kaduro, which is like extremely difficult. And, um, and being that it was my first film, I was, I was so scared. And with these actors, they're incredible. And they were just so gracious and so kind on set. And um, it made for a really great experience. So I don't know that I would necessarily even change anything. The way it, how it all went about was exactly what it needed to be. Yeah. So, Zainab, we were just hearing a little bit about how the role could be intimidating because of the accent, and, and I'm sure that was a big challenge, but was there anything as the process kind of went along that you discovered about the character that you didn't expect to be a challenge as the film progressed? Not really. I think the only thing that became a little bit um, concerning for me, because I wanted to get it right, was how deeply religious she is. And I am not a particularly fervent person in that sense. And um, and I want it was um, it was really important for me to find a way of portraying her beliefs without making it unintentionally funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she because of her religious fervor and the way the constant praying, the constant invocations, and all that. And in, I didn't want it to be to come across as something that's comic because mm -hmm. it's it's a deeply felt and deeply believed thing for a lot of people and my grandmother was a very very religious person and I have family members like that and I have friends who have a deep faith and belief and I didn't want to make light of that <coughs> and it could easily have gone into that territory so it was very I had to tread a delicate line there can you guys talk a little bit about developing an on-screen relationship? Because it's a unique scenario where your characters are separated for such a significant portion of their relationship, and we don't really see that kind of history portrayed on screen very often. So I'm not sure if you've done on-screen relationships like that before. So what was it about having history where the two people were together the entire time versus the situation in this movie where they're separated that might have been maybe a little more difficult to have that history come through? Oh, I feel like I've had a long-distance relationship in my imagination with Zainab for a long time because I've been a huge fan of hers for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it just played right into that. So having to deal with the reality when we face to face, but having this history of knowing her work and being a fan of her work for so long, it, it fit with the storyline. So for me, that that was my way in. How about for you, Zainab? I, I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's such a lovely thing to say. <laughs> Building the relationship for me was, um, like, Iqua was written such a beautiful piece anyway that, that there wasn't that much work. You just had to just say the words. It was just, they, it was just there on the page. But also I come from an immigrant family too, and I'm, I'm familiar with, you know, relatives who have gone away and they're waiting for the other person to join and then that person it doesn't work out for some reason and then in some cases you hear of that person falling in love with someone else and then trying to keep that relationship separate or not knowing how to deal with both these elements so i drew from life experience not personal life experience but from watching you know from stories i've heard mm -hmm. relatives have seen and yeah, that was mainly the the way of building it, watching my parents. 
<laughs> you both kind of touched on this a little, but uh, Jamie, and if you want to add to this, Equa, I would love to hear from you. But one of the things from your director's statement that really stood out to me was when you say that the circumstances may differ, but the themes are universal in this story. And I really do think that that's a way to convey a unique situation to everybody where it could really sink in and become deeply personal no matter who you are. And it's a powerful thing. So for you, Jamie, what what is the connection there for you? Is there that deeply personal connection where maybe you can't relate to this specific occurrence, but something else, you know, made you tap into this story in a personal manner? Um, for me, I can, uh, with the people that I grew up with as well, we can relate to families being separated, um, not necessarily because of immigration. It could be because of, and you talked about this, it could be because of incarceration. It could be because of military. I grew up in a military family. Um, and so I could relate to that separation of, of not seeing that father for such a long time and believing that this is a man that is meant to provide for the family, but he hasn't been in my life for 17 years. And so that was quite easy to tap into um, and quite profound to, to, to experience and to go through that. Yeah. There's a very, very powerful element to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, aside from those, I think I think what was quite surprising to me um, was just how broad the points um, of contact were for a lot of different people after even just pitching the story or at some point reading the script. Um, just random people that we met, you know, who seemed to be very well off in life or, you know, from various walks of life, not all Africans, not even all necessarily immigrants, but had some sort of touch point of like, this has happened to me in some way through, you know, my immigrant grandparents or through, you know, the nanny that, you know, looks after us or, you know, my neighbor who, or my bus driver that, you know, I, I always thought they just enjoyed being away from their family for some reason, and now I discovered this, that, and the other, you know. So it was it was actually quite surprising to find how many, how, uh, across the board, how many people could actually really relate to it on a personal level. Yeah, I'm sure you guys were probably feeling it in the room a little yesterday when yeah. you premiered. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your process as an actor's director on set? And obviously everyone can speak to this. You know, we, we have someone with a theater background, and I'm sure you each have your own different process so what is it that you like to do and how do you adjust to every single person and their personal needs yeah <laughs> i don't know if i adjusted to anyone's <laughs> personal needs <laughs> um you, to her. <laughs> you know f because i wrote the script what's useful for me in terms of being able to ground myself and s so that i'm able to support them on on set when we're shooting is to know as much backstory as possible. Um, you know, and so th that was an exercise that I went through while I was, you know, researching and working on the script. And then um, about a month before we started working together, I started working with a dialect coach um, and explaining, you know, working with her to to decide what it is that we wanted to do with, because it was very important to me. The authenticity was very important to me. And so, with dialect, it's, you know, people in Angola, I'm not from Angola, I've never been, I don't speak Portuguese, and neither do any of my actors, um, and neither did the dialect coach either. So she had a whole, you know, research that she needed to do, and then what part of Angola are they from, and what is their class background, and therefore what do they sound like? Is this a college-educated person or not? Is this, you know, what kind of families do they come from, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and so all of those things, and then because there's a music and a dance element, what kind of music do they listen to? What, what era of music, you know, so listening to certain music for particular eras within Angola and and music that was listened to by a lot of Angolanos who were uh, abroad um, during the Civil War and what was popular then and so all of that information when they showed up I was just like here's <laughs> you know stacks and stacks of information have fun guys you know and having them understand the Civil War and what that was and you know watching documentaries and listening to music I had a pl you know Spotify playlist for all of them and um, you know, so that was useful for me. <laughs> it was amazing. I don't know about yeah. it. was amazing because coming from a theatre background, that's what we're used to, getting all the information, all the research materials, and that allows us to like really delve 
deep into the character and find and create a person. Yeah. And so it was almost like working with a theater director, actually, you know, like table work and reading. Mm -hmm. It's really rare to find that, ex that extends, you know, that amount of work, table work for a film, yeah. you know? You remember you were saying, you usually just meet the day off and uh, there you go. And <laughs> we, didn't, we had weeks. No, I mean, for me, yeah, I, I found it very useful to have, to sit down and like we, we talked about what the background was and what the history was. And again, those playlists were extremely helpful for me because mm. music is a way in for me a lot mm. of times with characters. Um, and to get just the soundscape of, of that really helps just delve in. Mm. Um, and also to figure out what is this 17 year old girl from Angola listen to? What is that? How does that influence the way, you know, she moves about in this new country? Um, mm -hmm. What is that familiarity or, you know, um, so yeah. yeah. So this does sound like a very special, unique collaboration. So Jamie, I'm wondering for you because we're all a lot of Batman fans out there. What can you take from this process as your first feature film and kind of hold tight to what Eck was given you as an actor's director also and bring to, you know, an enormous big studio project like that? Echo had a lot of trust in us too. Um, th there wasn't a lot of like hands, like just like trying to shape us to do anything. She really trusted us with her work, which I thank you for. Um, and that in turn just gave me a bit of confidence of, of being able to show up and be like, okay, I know what I'm doing, even though I just graduated, but I, I, I know what I'm doing. I can, I can show up and just be present and, and trust the work. Um, so that's the biggest thing that I'm gonna take from, from this whole experience, uh, yeah. And uh, can you tease at all how it's been? I'm a huge fan of nah. Matt Reeves, and I think Robert Pattinson is just like a next level individual. Yeah. So what has your collaboration been like with them? And have they brought anything out of you that you didn't even think you were capable of yourself? Well, we haven't we haven't really started yet. So it's just, it's <laughs> more so we're getting ready to start um, in a couple weeks. So I'm excited to get, get over there and, and start that collaboration with them. That is so exciting. Yeah. I mean, we got, so many viewers out there who are so thrilled for you. I'm so sure, yeah. wishing you all the best Thank on that. You. I got a lot of faith. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your time today. A big congratulations again on the movie and being part of Sundance this year. Thank you to everybody out there watching this interview. Do not leave it without liking and sharing it. Keep an eye out for Farewell and More. Also, a big thanks to the fine folks at Kia. We are so happy to be part of the Supper Suite this year. The Collider Studio is in full swing right now. We're going to have so many more interviews coming your way real soon.